Hello everybody, welcome to our Nightingale Survival Guide. So we are basically right on the cusp of having the new uh, Realms Rebuilt update for Nightingale, which is bringing a whole big host of changes to the game. Like The entire game is changing, really. Uh, and I believe, potentially at the time of posting this video, either that update will be like just available or... Or it might be a little bit later in the day, but it's, it's in theory, supposed to be today, so very exciting. Um, and I thought we would just quick go over a lot of the new features that are coming. I kind of went over this in my last video, but the devs released uh, these kind of like 10 big features basically coming to the game. And they go into a little bit more detail about certain things that we can expect. So I thought I'd just kind of go over this so that if you're still, if you're waiting on that download, you know, maybe these are some of the things that you can expect with the new game. And uh, I just want to give a quick little warning as well to experience these new changes. We are all going to have to make a new save file uh so we're all starting fresh basically which means a lot of my guides are gonna be unfortunately not um not exactly uh, accurate anymore so i'll be posting uh new versions of those and i'll keep the old ones just for posterity because i love to see you know how games develop over time but i will be putting like links on the older videos to the new video so uh, hopefully we can avoid some uh, confusion there uh, but let's go into kind of these big changes that are coming to the game. And the very first is that they are revamping, honestly, like the, the main game core of the game, which is uh, they, they're kind of introducing this campaign now. I know like when the devs were talking about that, they, when they were thinking about how they wanted to uh, redo this game, basically, they looked at a lot of other games, they looked at Pal World, they looked at Enshrouded, uh, they looked at uh, V Rising, they looked at a number of different types of games to see what was working well with players. And then um, from what I understand, they kind of took those lessons and are now applying them to Nightingale. So with that, we have this, uh, it says a brand new handcrafted campaign. So basically, the idea here is that it's going to be a little bit more, I don't want to say streamlined, but like it's a little bit more like this is the story instead of it being a little bit more open, a little more loosey-goosey. I think that there's going to be like a, you know, a very firm start point and then an end point. And in the middle there, you know, you can go and explore. But I think from what kind of like what I'm reading here is that, you know, there are actual quests that maybe are a little bit more focused on story. So, um, and they call this storied realms as well. And all these realms I say here are uh, handcrafted, uh, packed with challenging enemies, ancient discoveries, and all new puzzles and dungeons. Uh, but we can still use uh, realm cards to affect those realms, which is great. And honestly, honestly, when this first when they first heard about this game, that was kind of what I had expected already that it was going to be like they had handcrafted these realms but we could impact them in, with the realm cards that they had mentioned but that wasn't exactly the case it was all procedural uh procedurally generated and uh so it looks like they're doing that now which is gonna be very interesting i'm very curious to see how that actually plays out um and then obviously they do mention here that if you still like the procedural generated uh maps realms they are still around uh they are just called uh, what do they call them now? The Untamed Realms. That was it. Uh, so those basically uh, are the procedural generated ones. And if, from what I understand, if you go there, you can get some like rare resources. There's lots of challenges there uh, and all that. So, um, you know, that's kind of how we uh, they're approaching the new game core. It is very much going to be, from what I understand, story focused. But there is sort of that wild card out there if you want to go explore the untamed realms now they are bringing new weapons which i thought they had i could have swore that i saw them bringing in some new weapons uh they're bringing in the bow and arrow uh short and long bows it looks like uh in multiple tiers as well uh they have um, new spells the immolation spell fion's wrath all of those so you know some new things to, to play around with and then obviously they mention here um the new b types of bound uh including the cannon wielding a bound breaker which i believe these are already in the um have already been introduced in the game because i'm pretty sure i ran into one of these cannon wielding guys and they were not fun i mean they were but they were terrible uh so you know new new things to play around with uh in that regard they've also revised how bosses are in the game um these are kind of uh bosses that are situated in sites of power 
Um, there might be some more, be some more world bosses too that just exist out in the world. But basically, they've redesigned uh, how they all um, work with like new abilities, unique abilities, I believe, is what they what they say there. Uh, and then distinctive locations too. So they have they're all very kind of different from each other. Um, I only really played one boss. I didn't really have a problem with him. He was pretty easy to just kind of like fool with you know what i mean so very curious to see like how these new bosses are in terms of challenge and you know if we if we have to adapt each one or if we can use the same strategy over and over we'll have to see how in depth it is basically but we have new bosses coming now another big thing that i know a lot of uh players were complaining about was that the was the building limits um they wanted to build like you know very extravagant buildings and i feel yeah i'm usually right there with you uh, and they couldn't do that because they just didn't have enough of a build limit. Well, the devs are increasing that. So you'll be able to build far more, far uh, far bigger structures now. And they're also bringing in the Regency tile set, which I guess looks like that in that picture, which is pretty cool. Love, love. I mean, just I'm a big history buff and Regency era is always very interesting. So uh, excited to play around with that. Um, now they're also bringing in pets, which is always adorable. Obviously, they had uh, the, the, um, the dog that you could get with a cute little top hat but now they also have cats with bonnets uh they mentioned here an adorable uh Eoten sapling um and i'm sure they're gonna have quite a number uh more uh, being introduced throughout development uh, it says here that we can shelter up to 20 pets so um got a pretty i got a pretty you know, good feeling that there's there's gonna be quite a few pets which i mean i always love having pets in the games and we can have 20 of them which is great i know modders out there if you could up that to like 50 100 pets <laughs> you, y'all, you'll get a download from me for sure uh so we have pets coming in and then they kind of went into this uh before um and i believe i uh, made a video on it but this is basically their new overhauled progression system so uh earlier we basically had to progress by going to realms, uh, buying certain uh, blueprints, if you will, recipes from essence traders, and then that would unlock it. And then we would have to be- make like augmentations, which would then unlock other crafting uh, recipes. And it's it wasn't a straightforward process, which is I think why they kind of tried to make this a little bit well, more streamlined, really. So they're, they're, this, is, this, is their, this is their new progression system, which basically there's going to be a progression tab in our guidebook now uh, where we can see this tree, basically, kind of like a, you know, like a, like a little technology tree, basically. And we unlock these with essence that we gain in the game. And they might be, they might have uh, adjusted how we earn essence because it says essence unlocked throughout the game so i don't know if that's like completing quests puzzles challenges defeating enemies i don't know if we're going to be getting essence through harvesting anymore or if we do i think it's going to be greatly reduced um so we'll have to see how we earn essence these days but in this new you know <laughs> this new big update uh and then obviously we just use that to unlock the blueprints that we want so it's a little bit easier just to be like oh i want this there it is that's how much i need for it great i'll go you know grind that get that done um, so that's pretty nice. We like that. And we can also uh, customize our clothes a little bit more. And, and I know they've made a little uh, asterisk here saying that they're going to be working on this a little bit more down the line. But this, uh, for coming with this update, basically, uh, we have this thing called the Glamour Station, which allows us to change the physical shape of an item to another item of the same type. So I guess if you really like, uh, like a pistol or something, but it's not doing the... Um, the same damage as before you can take that appearance and put it on a better pistol so it's kind of like a transmog system um not exact i would say but close and uh so you could do that obviously with weapons with clothes whatever so if you if you want to have if you want to make something really fancy and you just want to keep that you like that look you can just keep on taking it keeping the keep the the look of it for your next armor set so that's pretty nice there and obviously like i said they're going to be bringing in more customization options down the line so they also mentioned that they are streamlining crafting now this i'm gonna have to actually like see in practice i know like the main thing that they're uh doing here is they're changing how augmentations work before you needed them to like basically unlock new recipes crafting recipes um that's no longer the case now augmentations are basically going to offer bonus stats to crafted items and as well and also boost refinement times for workbenches so it's probably going to reduce uh crafting times and then also give some sort of bonus to any kind of crafted item that you make 
uh, with that crap, with that work, with that workbench that has that augmentation. So I kind of like that. I like how that that works. Um, and I imagine these this obviously works with the new progression system, where you just unlock it there, you make it, and then you get the the the, the buffs with that. Um, so we'll have to see what the actual crafting system is, because I do agree that like it can be pretty gosh darn confusing, because they have like the way that they. Um, had is like they had like a bunch of different types of meat and then you couldn't use different types of meat to craft you had to use the same type of meat to craft certain things and like for example like uh j just to just to make this a little bit clearer you know if you had like deer meat for example you had like two deer meat and you had five wolf meat we'll just say and you were trying to craft something that required five meat you couldn't put like two wolf meat and then like three deer meat or whatever. It had to be like just the five wolf meat. That was the only thing that would work. So I don't know if they plan on still kind of making their crafting diverse in the sense that like everything has its kind of tag. Like if it's if it's deer meat, it comes from deer meat or if it's wolf meat, it comes from wolf meat versus this is just meat, you know. <laughs> um, I don't know how deep that's going to go and I don't know how that's going to affect the crafting system. Uh, but they said they're trying to make it less confusing, so we'll definitely have to see how that actually works. And another kind of interesting addition they're bringing to this is that you can now put your respite realm, your home basically, uh, in any realm. So you don't have to have, what is it, like a, like a well, literally just like a, like a respite realm basically. You can build it in any realm. If you like a realm, you can just build your home there. And I'm kind of curious about... Um, what this entails in regards to um like if you're able to have more than one home or if you're still only able to have one um because it'd be nice to be able to have like i mean you can obviously make like little bases in the other realms and such but i uh, i am curious to know if, if if this will allow us to have maybe like an additional home or two that we could put because you know what you might be like building on a, in a realm and then you encounter like a realm that you enjoy even more but you don't really want to get rid of your other one because you put so much work into it so you know but we'll see we'll see but basically this we can put on our rel our house wherever we want to on any realm so that could be pretty fun and then they kind of just go into like all these little things here obviously like ui improvements uh 10 new charms npcs can now use grenades and throwing knives which is great uh they have a new q button consumable uh radial menu which is also great um we like that uh npcs will no longer damage the estate which is really good because that's really frustrating uh we have a new toolbar arrangement new ranged weapon variants and we have new rest options which is pretty interesting uh so we can see you know how long we want to rest for in terms of time of day uh and we can also change the difficulty of the game um, and then also we can have npcs uh, use consumables which is great because i've been wanting to heal my guy for like ever and I haven't been able to. So uh, so we love that. That's great. So uh, and then they kind of just go into all these other updates that they have brought to the game. So those are things that we can look forward to when the Realms Rebuild update drops. Um, and I'm very curious. I can't wait to dive in. I, I, I feel like this is the Nightingale that I expected when it first came out. Like I, like I enjoy the game. It's very interesting. The, the lore is great. But I do feel like it was just a little too barren it was a little too shallow uh, and i'm hoping that this kind of redo of this this handcrafting and the focus perhaps a little bit more on story and a little bit more guidance on the story that will kind of give it the ground the grounding that it needs uh, but we will see uh we <laughs> I, i'm sure you guys will probably play this before i do because i'll i gotta you know work and all that um but uh let me know in the comments if you have played it if you have played the new version what are your first thoughts because i'm really curious i can't i can't wait to get into it because I, I am really i'm really eager to see this uh how it's all changed but yeah thanks so much uh for watching again let me know in the comments seriously i'll see you guys in the next one until then keep surviving and keep thriving